welcome you to our program today. We have a very special guest with us. Her name is Becky Seymour. And so, Becky, it's so good to have you with us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Becky has uh, quite a story to tell. And it just shows just, you know, how God's presence is with us and how God is always watching over us, how God guides us. And, you know, in the moment, we may not always recognize it, but then over time, all of a sudden, you know, we have those special grace moments or God moments when we see God's divine providence and how God has been working in our lives all along. And as we look back, you know, we can certainly see where, you know, God has interacted in our lives in such a special way. And God says he'll never leave us or forsake us, but that he will always be with us. And, and so, Becky, we want to hear your story today. And I and I don't know, maybe we ought to just pick it up when you were, what, a senior in high school? Absolutely. I was a senior going to um, Newman, which is a Catholic high school in Mason City. I'm the oldest of six girls in a family in a very um, strong Catholic background. So um, starting off, the first daughter being pregnant as a senior was not a good thing. Um, I contacted Catholic Charities. Um, in the day, that was different. It was back in 1974. And so at the time, you wouldn't be able to stay in high school. So around the Christmas break is when I actually left. Missed senior prom, graduation, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Finished to get my diploma through the area college, the community college, so did the work on my own. Um, just a, a struggle in you know getting to that point. The young man who is the baby's dad, his first reaction was abortion. Um, I was amazed that that was even an option back in 74, but um, that's been an option for a lot of years. And uh, just the strong background, knowing who you know Jesus is and who God is in our life um, and how precious life is, I couldn't imagine aborting. But because the father of the baby wasn't on board with me, then adoption became the option that would be best for me. At that time, I had, you know, not a lot of aspiration, not a lot of big dreams for myself. Um, if you look back to the years back then, we as women could be teachers or nurses or, uh, you know, hairdressers and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mainly wanted to just be married with kids. and. Um, so it was a difficult decision to give the baby away, but because uh, her dad wasn't on board, it was really the only option at the time. Um, we actually were engaged to be married. And um, when I look back over it, though, I see that God's hand was all over that because I went to Iowa City for the birthing process. Um, you went down a week before your due date, and actually uh, she was born just um, a day after I had arrived down there. So the Lord was very um, good to me in that fact as well. And uh, you s normally back then they said, don't see your baby, don't have anything to do with your baby because that'll make the separation so much easier. I being the stubborn, you know, 17 year old that I was, thought I had the world by the tail and knew everything. Well, I wouldn't sign the paperwork until I was able to see the baby that I had had. So I went down to the nursery and was able to actually hold this little baby girl. And uh, the nurse who was working at the time took a Polaroid photo of me, a black and white Polaroid. As I went back to the room and everything was done, the paperwork was all signed. I, like a 17 year old young in your life, flipped the picture over and wrote down the day, the time she was born, how much she weighed, how long she was. And really, that's all that I had for years. Um, now we're going to fast forward and we're going to go into um, my life. I, I, well, I do want to say, though, the same year she was born in April, that same exact year, the day after Christmas, her dad died. And it was an um, extreme accident. Um, but again, you know, the Lord's providence in that I wouldn't be a single mother and just uh, stuff that you don't even recognize until years and years later. I met my husband, Bob, who I've been married to now for um, almost 41 years, and he knew the whole story, knew exactly what had happened, um, in fact, knew Dale's family, and just a beautiful story for us to be able to share. But no one else, other than my own immediate family, basically knew about the baby that I had given away. I grew up south of Mason City, Iowa, which is in the central north part of the state, and Bob's from Bankston. So I moved to the area here in Dubuque, um, very far away from where I had grown up mm -hmm. at the time, you know, a four-hour trip. 
And so didn't find any need to really tell anyone the story until we had four children. I had been working at Timmermans as a waitress. A really dear friend of mine was a waitress as well, and she used to come to work in tears. She had had a daughter that her husband now had custody of, and she would cry because she didn't get to see her much. Or, and so she's the only person that I shared. You know, at least she knows you're her mother, and she gets to see you, and you get to see her as she grows, so you know she's okay. I had a baby that I had that I gave away, and you always wonder. Well, and that was basically all that was said. And mm -hmm. then years, we separated our ways, and years later, she's doing her college uh, internship. She's at Hempstead High School. And I talked to her on the phone one day, and she said, I said, how do you like your, your new job? Is it going well? Oh, it's really good. She said, there's this little girl on the track team. She reminds me what you must have been like in high school. Well, none of it registered. You know, people tell you all the time that you look like so-and-so. Mm -hmm. You remind them of, you know, somebody else. But um, at the time, nothing. And then a few months later, I'm working as a hairdresser in Benton. I had a whole little family waiting to get their haircuts. I thank God that I had already cut the mother's hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a little bunch of boys that were still waiting, very easy cuts, when I got the phone call from my friend. And she simply asked, that baby that you had that you gave away, was it a girl or a boy? I said, a girl. And then she said, oh my heavens. And then she said, well, where did you go to have your baby? I said, to Iowa City, oh my heavens. She said, well, one more question. What month did you have your baby? And I said, in April. And she said, oh, oh my gosh, it's her. That girl that's on the track team I told you about, it's her, it's your daughter. Well, I said, I can't possibly do this right now. And I looked at my book and what time I would be home, and then I called her. She and her husband came to our home. I showed her the picture that I'd had all those years, and she made a phone call to this girl's mother. And then we spoke on the phone. And just an amazing um, calm for me came over. Uh, the Lord would just, I, I prayed all the way home from Benton. We lived over by um, Keeler. And I just prayed all the way home, Lord, that, that whatever would happen, you know, I didn't want to get my hopes up. I didn't want to get excited. You just, you just want to be able to stay peaceful about it. And a real great peace did come over me for that phone call. I gave, uh, Linda is her name, I gave her all kinds of information that she would need if they wanted to check with Catholic Charities. But I also said to her, you know, I made the decision years ago to give this baby away, and if you never contact me, I'm okay with that. I really am at peace with the fact that if I never meet this child, that's fine. So I want your family to feel comfortable with the fact that I will not be stalking your home, I will not be stalking her at school, I'm not going to be looking for any information. I also would ask one thing in return. I have a family and four children, so if you call my home and want to contact me, just ask for my husband or myself so mm -hmm. they don't know anything about this. And then I found out um, that it was just a week later that we, uh, well, actually, that was a Friday, the Monday that I got the phone call from Linda. She said, uh, we're sure that you're Julie's mother and she can't wait to meet you. And then the following Friday is when my husband and I made the trip over to their home to meet her. And it was, um, it's been incredible ever since. What was that like that first time that you saw her, you know, in, as you were reunited? I thought from all of the things that my friend had shared that I, I would feel like I was looking in a mirror, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. She was a beautiful young woman, um, just more impressed with her family. They had a beautiful home. Her dad worked at John Deere. Um, she had a brother, older brother, who was adopted first, and then they adopted her, and then her sister, younger sister. They had naturally had their own uh, daughter mm -hmm. four years later. So I think I was more impressed with just the home that she grew up with, the love that was at the door mm -hmm. to greet us. And her mother had photo albums just from her teeny tiny years all the way through her high school years of pictures and it just a trip for me to see her life in, in picture form and just to be able to, oh my goodness, she looks like me here when I was younger, but oh, then some of her years she had to have looked like her dad because mm -hmm. there wasn't any similarity. 
Yeah. Well, Tanya, this is quite a story. It, it really just shows the hand of God working through this whole thing in, in many ways. I mean, mm -hmm. not just the fact that, you know, you gave up this child for adoption, that, um, that you were reunited with her, but the fact that God took a hold of this child and uh, placed her in a wonderful home and, mm -hmm. and raised her in a good way, but that also the Lord was you know, taking care of and watching over you during all this time as well. It just seems like, you know, what seemed like um, really a, a major time in your life as far as, you know, being 17, mm -hmm. you know, and what, you know, it almost sounds like it was really, well, you grew up in a very strong uh, Catholic Christian home where you had uh, high values as far mm -hmm. as, you know, do's and don'ts and things like that, I suppose. And it's like sure. you say in the first, a girl and a child in the family all of a sudden comes, you know, that you had this uh, pregnancy as a, as a senior in high school, that that was, you know, not just, you know, a real challenging time for you, but it must have been for your whole family then as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the thing that um, really astounds me, I guess, would be the good word for that. Um, is how much God loved me, even in my sinfulness. In the fact that, you know, as I mentioned, I had missed senior prom and my graduation. Well, being a hairdresser, I was able to do Julie's hair for her prom, and our whole family went to her graduation. So the Lord replaced those things that I had missed out on as a young woman myself through the daughter that I had granted life to. And our children, Bob and I, you know, our, our children's names all start with J. We have uh, Jenny, Jill, Jody, and Justin. They're all two years apart. Well, Julie falls two years older than our oldest daughter, and I didn't name her. Her name is Julie, but she fits yeah. right in line. So just little things like that that the Lord would just surprise me with, I think, were um, I, I really had never felt more loved and treasured mm -hmm. in all my life. It just shows that you that God can take, in a sense, bad situation, situations or a situation, and really you know make things right. Absolutely. And, you know, that there's and blessings think, in it. And I think for um, young women who women who are facing that today, you know, just know that God will honor your gift of life. That literally, if you choose life, mm -hmm. that you're going to see the fruits of that. I know that um, it's so easy to think of aborting babies nowadays, but that's not what God would want for us. Yeah, so when you look at, well, young mothers, you know, unexpected pregnancies, and, and of course there's always this emphasis, you know, as far as teaching abstinence for, you know, for young people prior to their marriages and things like that, but we, you know, that's always, you know, what we hope is being taught. But even with that, in the event of uh, a pregnancy, that you have options. Absolutely. Yeah. And so there's options other than just having an abortion. Absolutely. Yes. And I actually volunteer now for Birthright, an organization here in Dubuque. Um, we're actually just not very far from here, just down on um, 9th Street. We just moved our offices mm -hmm. recently. It's a great place for women who find themselves in that, that predicament. Uh, just call our office, stop by anytime. Our volunteers are wonderful in just sharing information about how we can help you in the process of uh, bringing that baby to life and also what we can help in the, you know, the time after that if you need some help. We have all the resources for the different wonderful places mm -hmm. here in Dubuque. Um, but we're here n not to judge anyone or, uh, right. you know, absolutely. Um, it's just a beautiful organization. So if a um, mother decides to carry her baby to term and then keep the child, that you have resources for that absolutely. young mother and baby. Well, that's absolutely. really good. Absolutely. Yeah. And this week mm -hmm. was um, treasure for me. One of the young women that I had worked with through Birthright, she just mm -hmm. gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl. She had selected the family who would be adopting, and so um, now it'll just be time of support for her mm -hmm. at, at, after the baby has come and, and just loving her through that void, mm -hmm. you know, when they leave the hospital, so. 
Yeah, and then, but then also, if a um, young mother decides to give the child up for adoption, then with Birthright, is that an adoption agency no, too then, or do you work not with at all. We just, agency? yes, we, okay. we simply just um, refer them. We refer them mm -hmm. to, and the same if they decide to keep their child. Mm -hmm we will refer them to the organizations who can help those young mothers. We are um, just there in the, mostly in the interim of, um, they come in, they can have a pregnancy test with us to find out yes or no that they are pregnant. We offer services of maternity clothes, gently used. Um, we have baby clothes up to a year. We have those kind of things in the office. Um, but mainly just for the support. When we do find out that a young woman is positive in her pregnancy test, we'll just contact them about once a month to see how they're doing, find out how things are going, if they have any questions, and that kind of thing. We just try to stay connected until the baby arrives. It sounds like you know, you've got quite a ministry here that you have going and how you're touching the lives of so many people, so many, well, so many young mothers who, yeah, it's gotta be, you know, I suppose, uh, well, there's got to be probably a lot of different labels as far as, you know, emotions and things like that, but you know, maybe it's kind of a, a scary time, I would think. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and uh, Jeff, I'm not alone. It's a, a whole group of volunteers. I really am only in the office just a couple of days a, mm -hmm. a month, and that's mm -hmm. the way with our volunteers. We're always looking mm -hmm. for people who are like-minded, who really mm -hmm. do believe in bringing those babies to life. We always are looking for volunteers at the Birthright Organization. Yeah, I'm just so thankful for that, you know, that mm -hmm. you have such a, a coalition of people and, and you're very strong in your faith and very strong in the Catholic Church. And I know that the Catholic Church has got, you know, real strong stances to support life. And I think exactly. that that's something that needs to continually be uh, highlighted about the church. And, but also, you know, just uh, how the church has developed such a network of of caring and support and encouragement to young mothers. And I always think mm -hmm. about, well, you know, I think of Mother Mary and how, you know, what she must have been going through when the angel told her that she was going to give mm -hmm. birth at <laughs> such a young age. And, Absolutely. You know, and then, you know, here again, you know, what a blessing that Jesus has been to the whole world mm -hmm. <laughs> and as our Savior in, in the life. And so what an example of, you know, Mary being able to, Absolutely. take God at his word and, and the, the gift of life and salvation and that's something that you know is to be shared and you know what a, what a beauty that that life is what a gift life is for for all of us absolutely mm -hmm. I think um, one of the things that I'm most excited about our um, our church and not just our church it's all over the quad cities here too as well but we offer the um, CEW weekends it's okay. our Christian experience weekend I think for us uh, as young people, I'll just put it across the board for everybody, um, I especially notice that in the Catholic Church that we don't always have the full grasp of how much God loves us. I mean, we're taught things from a young age, but until we personally experience Jesus on a level that touches us in a, a special way, you know, I don't think we fully grasp what he did for us on the cross. And so our Christian Experience Weekends, I really feel, um, allow people, we actually, um, from 18 on, it doesn't matter how uh, old you are, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, come to our weekends, but I, I really feel like just giving people the opportunity to experience the love of Christ and the love that he has for us really basically changes our life for the good and for a, in a huge fashion. So I'm really um, excited about our weekends. We offer those once a year. We have a weekend for the women and then a weekend for the men that follows usually the week after. A whole network of people. It takes about 40 people to put on each weekend, but. Well, how many people attend this generally? You know, um, we can, uh, we have space for up to 42 okay. people. Sometimes we're full, sometimes not. Um, the women, we tend to be able to fill easier than the men's weekend. Men have a lot of things on their shoulders and very busy trying to provide for their families. So they don't often see the importance of taking some time for themselves in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay, so you, you know, so love is certainly, the unconditional love of our Lord is one of the big emphasis of this. And, 
and how important that is because that does have so much to say about our own self-image mm -hmm. but then also our outlook in in life Absolutely. you know i think that's so much of it if we think that we're just going around as being awful sinners that's one thing but to know that we are loved and redeemed and you know what a what a different uh outlook and approach that would be for our mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. yeah and i think the fact that it also connects us with another community you know because we're not just a church you know community although i would suggest that you're part of a church community because that's absolutely important you know, I don't think God ever intended us to do life alone mm -hmm. and to not have the support of friends, especially Christian friends. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I love about the CEW as well, that it really plugs you into a strong community, a beautiful community of like-minded believers, people who have a lot of the same goals in life as you do. Um, we're now starting to see the next generation attending the weekend. So, um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's probably 15, 16, 17 years, somewhere in there, that our own church has sponsored the weekends. But for us now, we're seeing those people who were the early uh, ones coming on board with us, now their children are making the weekend. Yeah. So it makes a difference in generational. Uh, yeah, so now you say that they have a lot of different, was it sessions or workshops? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so what, you know, I know that, you know, the love of Christ is something that's really emphasized, but, um, what, but what would be some of the topics that generally are uh, talked about or addressed there? Do you, I mean, are there certain... So it's a um, process. The whole weekend is actually a okay. process. And we start out on Friday night. We only listen to one speaker Friday night, and it's mainly a, a, a talk about yourself. Mm -hmm. We kind of start at the basic, where are you at, who are you? And, and then we move forward into Saturday. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm on the advisory board with that uh, CEW community, and I actually get the opportunity to work with Father George and Sister Carol, who were the um, founders of the weekend. They took the Curcio weekend that was actually a four day and brought it into a three day weekend. So they had to crunch some things in, but really wonderful to be part of the team with him because you get the vision of what uh, the weekend was all about. So it's kind of like, um, we, it's like, it follows our life like in, in normal pattern in spirituality. It's just me. First, it's all about me, even when I'm a toddler. Me, me, I, I, what can I get for me? You know, up to even our teen years, we're like that. It isn't until we're a little older, and the same way with our spiritual life. We're a little older in our spiritual life before we recognize that it can't just be me. It needs to be me and God. It needs to be my life with the Lord. And then the following, then on Sunday, we kind of look into, it isn't just about you and your relationship with God, but now you need to include your community. You need okay. to be that outreach. You need to be the arm that reaches out in love. So our talks follow along the line of that. We listen to different talks. We have other activities on the weekend. Um, when people make the weekend, they'll come home and not be able to share a lot with you. And that's just because we want it to be the experience for you as well when you come on board yourself. So unfortunately, I can't tell you all the goodies that yeah. happen. <laughs> but it's uh, at the Shalom Center? Yes, we're very fortunate uh, that you'll get your own room. Oh, wow. You have your own room. Um, the bathrooms we share, but the facilities are beautiful. Yeah. They have an amazing chapel mm -hmm. that's just a very sacred, beautiful yeah. space, a gorgeous dining room and kitchen that we're able to use. So, mm -hmm. yep, we're at the Shalom, and, and uh, we always welcome anyone. If there's a financial difficulty, we offer help with that as well. We, mm -hmm. Our community is really good at doing um, fundraisers to help supplement people mm -hmm. who can't maybe afford the full weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Becky is certainly a, a living example and a testimony to us of how, how, of how God is with us and how God loves us and how God loves us unconditionally. And she also you know, is an example of, well, of a person who, where God has given to her such hope throughout her life and, and such encouragement and is now using her to minister to, to, so, many, to so many people. And so... I don't know, Becky, I, I guess when I think about, you know, you and all the work that you're doing, 
you know, it's at, you know, working with uh, young uh, mothers, but then also, you know, working with um, Christian Experience Weekend. You know, that, you know, God has been using you as an instrument of his, of his work, you know, and expressing and, and shining in and through you about, uh, you know, as far as his love and his encouragement and support. And boy, that is just, it's just, but this whole story of how you've been reunited with that, with yeah. your daughter in such a way that you never would have, would have expected, but it's obviously that was God's will that that happened. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I'm just thinking about, you know, as far as the young mothers out there today, you know, that are, you know, kind of in a position where they're wondering about this and that, and I'm sure for everybody, you know, the experience of the journey might be just a little bit different, but, you know, I don't know, what would you, what kinds of words of encouragement would you give to our, our viewers and for families that it might be facing a situation like this that you went through? Absolutely, thank you. I would, um, first of all, want to speak to the parents. Just recognize that, honestly, um, we all make mistakes. Uh, we're all sinners. Mm -hmm. We all need the love of our Savior. So I know that if you're a parent who has heartbreak over the fact that your daughter comes home to share that she's expecting, um, don't shut the door on her. Don't, don't close the avenue of your love that flows to her. Mm -hmm. To the young girl who finds herself in that position, I would just um, ask you to consider whether, you know, I know it's your decision. I know that's what the world mm -hmm. tells us now, that it's your body and your decision. But all life is precious in the eyes of the Lord. And again, I know he will honor your choice of life. I know that he will bless you beyond measure. I know that you'll really recognize mm -hmm. um, God later in life if you choose life. Yeah, did you hear that? That it's not such a, there's blessing and that there is um, life Mm -hmm. and that uh, there's a, a beautiful future ahead. And that's something that, you know, God certainly wants us to experience, mm -hmm. you know, a, a blessed life uh, ahead and that God blesses all life and cherishes all life. Well, this is uh, Becky Seymour. Thank you so much for being on our program today. You've been, you know, such an inspiration, you, you know, me. for us this day. And we certainly take your words to heart. And I want to thank all of you for joining us this day as well. Mm -hmm.